Hello friends, Coach Bob with you, and today, oh, nice cup of warm coffee, things are kind of cold, but, and today we're going to be talking about what you need to carry when you tour. Now, no, I'm not talking about clothing, I'm not talking about rain gear, that's not the kind of stuff I'm referring to. I'm talking about what kind of tools you need to carry and any sort of odds and ends that you might need when you're out there on the road. You know, I had someone ask me about this recently and I apologize. I get so many messages and if I can find the uh, comment, I'll put it right here. Um, but basically, um, the question of, you know, when you drive a car, you don't carry a toolkit. Um, so why is it necessary to carry a toolkit when you ride a spider or a motorcycle or anything of that nature? And the reason that I do personally is because when you're on a motorcycle, you're in the elements. And so if I get stuck somewhere and Coach Vic is stranded there with me, it can be a real problem. Uh, and when we were going through the desert, a flat tire, things, when you don't have a spare, uh, these can be real problems. So there are things that I carry when I travel on the Spider that I don't necessarily carry when I travel in a car. Um, Here's a couple of things that I always have handy. These stay right there in my in my uh, glove box. One is a pocket knife. I carry a pocket knife with me everywhere I go. I highly recommend it. This thing is everything from a screwdriver to open in a Slim Jim. Uh, I carry this thing with me and I use it 10 times a day. The other thing, a good quality flashlight. Um, this light here is actually a very inexpensive little Rayovac flashlight. I've carried this thing for years. It has been very, very good. It's been in rain. It's been beaten to death. I'm going to show you another light though that I plan on carrying this year. This is the Nebo Slim Light. This is the one that Cabinet Man bought me. And this light here is USB chargeable and it is extremely bright. If you hold it down, it will dim or brighten. And one of the things that I really like about it, it has a magnet on the base, magnet here, and it has a clip. You can clip this to your shirt. You can take little pieces of metal, which you can purchase um, and with, with like a double face tape on them, you can stick those to strategic places within your trailer and your trunk and you can boom, stick it there and see what you're doing at night. So I'm gonna be carrying this as well as my other flashlight. So that one actually got added to the kit. So thank you again, Cabinet Man, for sending that to me, man. It is awesome. And I'm gonna tell you, I've used it a lot already. So I'm gonna get some of these things out of the way as I bring things here. Um, this is not meant to be uh, as much as a visual acuity presentation as it is just information, things that I carry. So here we go. The first thing I carry, this stays in the trailer all the time. It is an Orion uh, medical kit, but it's not just a medical kit. As you can see, I've got, it's loaded up with zip ties. I carry zip ties everywhere I go. It has road flares, emergency road flares. This is a tire plug kit with extra plugs in varying sizes. The, the tire plug kit is important. I also carry, yes, a little bit of duct tape and electrical tape, but I'll show you the electrical tape later. This is not only that, I have a little, like I said, it's got a little first aid kit in here with some gloves, a uh, high-vis rain poncho, that sort of stuff. And then, like I said, basic first aid things jumper cables, you get the idea. When I leave the house with Coach Vic on the Spider, this is always, it is always with me. Um, I'm not going to say that I always have it when I'm on the Spider. And you can see I've got it, I've got it jammed full because I've added things to this pack. I picked this up like at a O'Reilly Auto Parts, a place somewhere like that. Very, very simple, very inexpensive, you know, 
Could be a lifesaver though. Could absolutely be a lifesaver. Everything from, like I said, gloves to uh, high-vis vests to the little, what I call the aluminum foil blanket, that sort of stuff. Those things are in here. I also carry a multi, couple of multi-tools here. These, I like again, these are not in my toolkit. These are things that I keep handy on the spider because I just may need them. A set of Torx wrenches, a set of Allen wrenches, and Loctite. You know, when you're on the road and you may not be able to torque something like you might want to be able to in your garage, a little Loctite might keep you from losing a part. Again, this, all of the things that I have mentioned, these go with me every time I go anywhere with Coach Vic. I don't leave home without these things on me. But before we talk about tools, I want to do this. I want to also mention, I'll post a picture of it or a link of it right up here. It's a it's a battery jump start pack that is sold by Le Monster. It looks pretty sweet. I think I'm going to order one of those before our next big trip. Um, I really think that's a pretty good idea. The big things that normally occur when you're out with a bunch of folks on motorcycles, at least what I've seen, a cable adjustment or a cable braking. I know you're saying, well, we don't have clutch cables. We don't have the traditional braking mechanisms that a motorcycle have. But there is a mechanism that we have and we're going to be talking about, and that's that park and brake. That can keep you from being able to move. And it has a history in the history of the spider of sticking. So you need to make sure that if you've never read about it, heard about it, or thought about it, be sure, and I'm not going to go through the process of how to undo the parking brake. It's really quite simple. However, Google that. Go on YouTube and just type in, you know, Can-Am Spider parking brake stuck. There are several videos out there that will show you how to undo it. You need to know how to do that. If you get stranded somewhere, that's a problem. So cables, and then the other thing is a battery where it got really hot or it got really cold. Drain your battery overnight and you need to be able to jump. I carry cables, but I will be changing that. I will still have cables, but I will be buying that pack that Le Monster has. And he says, and, 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 and uh, the guy is super bright. He says it will jump the spider off no problem. It'll charge phones. It'll do a lot of things. I could take it into the motel room each night, charge it up, make sure everything's ready to go. So I'm going to pick one of those up for sure. And, and I think it will be a wise investment. I think it would definitely pay for itself. It's also convenient. It's got the uh, the wireless uh, or the, the cableless phone charging potent capability and that sort of thing. Lay your phone on top of it. It'll charge your phone. Has USB ports coming off of it. So I think it's going to be a really nice piece of work to have with the Spider when you travel. I think it's going to meet a lot of needs for when you're out on the road. Something that you can keep handy in your trailer or in your, in your saddlebag. Now, let's talk about tools. There are toolkits out there, and of course, you have the one that came with your spider, and, it, and it's in your spider. If you've never gone through it, look through it. I'm not going to go through it. Uh, I am probably replicating some of those tools. I want to buy the traditional fold-up, roll-up, tie a little string around it type of kit and put my own together. The way I've done mine, I've got a towel and I've just taken the things and I put them in a towel and I take them in the towel, I roll them up and then I take some paracord and I wrap that paracord around it and that's what holds my toolkit. That toolkit sits in the bottom of the frunk under my baggage and it's right there. All I have to do is pull my backpack out, I can take those tools out, I pull that paracord off there, I roll my towel out, I unroll it. And then I have these tools sitting on a nice light colored background so that I don't lose things. You may not be like me. You may be able to see, you know, the, the flea on the ground with me. If it's dark and it's laying on something dark, I can't see it as well as I could. And I'm prone to losing things. And therefore, I like having something with a lighter background. So there it is. This is what it looks like. There it is. Um... When I get somewhere, now you're not going to get a great bird's eye view of this, but it's not necessary. Again, I'll go through what's in here, but basically I fold it up on the ends and there it is. It's nothing complex at all. 
This is a pen puller, but it also works as a great prying tool. It has been beaten to death and dragged around many, many times. I take a socket wrench and I bring a 10 millimeter socket. Now the reason for the 10, there are some pieces around the headlights that if you had a wire get crimped or broken or anything like that, this would allow you access to it. I also carry, have an extension right here, and I also normally carry two of these extensions and that way I can make them long like a screwdriver handle. Torx sockets, I carry Torx sockets, I carry a 30, a 35, a 40, and a 45. Those four will pretty much get anything off of your spider that is on there that is a Torx bolt. I also carry this. Now this is an old bicycle tool that I have had for years and years. And these Allen keys on here, there's a five on here. That's the one that I use for the foot rests for Coach Vic. If something happened, they vibrated loose. Her security with her feet is far more important than the average person. So I check the torque on those things. Although they're Loctite and they're on there, I check them and with this, I can put my hand on it and I can really put some mojo on it. So I carry that. This is a 12 millimeter wrench that I carry. The reason I carry a 12 specific if you watch the parking brake video, you're gonna understand a 12. I carry a 12, sometimes I carry two 12s. If I don't carry two 12s, I always have a couple of pairs of vice grips. The needle nose vice grips are to pull things like springs that you may need to take off of a parking brake. You can grab that the, the back of that spring and you can pull it off. There's the electrical tape I was referring to earlier. I always carry a Leatherman tool. Yes, it is a real Leatherman. It's the smaller one, but it's pliers, it's knife, it's scissors. Um, I can tell you I've used this thing hundreds of times for a litany of things. I've had it for years and years and years. Uh, I even took an old koozie and cut it up and made a case for it. <laughs> I had the leather case, but I like having the quick access to it keeps it from rattling around, a razor knife, a regular and Phillips head screwdriver, and a pair of wire cutters. Little needle nose pliers. I like having things that I can reach in and grab things that might be out of my reach when things are hot. I've got several tire gauges, some that have the little, the turn on them and some that have the, the hose on them. Um, the one that had the hose on it that I normally use for the spider, I tore so I got this one out for for this presentation. I will have the list of this up on the screen at the end of this video. You can do a screenshot of that. I will also have a list of the things that I carry in the description of the video down below. I will have a list of all of these things. Now, that's pretty much it. That's what I carry. I could do something a little, a little easier maybe. Uh, but this, when I have all of this, and I lay it out like this, and I know what I need. There again, I'll take this, fold these corners in, I'll roll it up, and then I'll take paracord, I'll tie it, and it goes in the bottom of the frunk. It's ready, it's handy, I pull the string off, I roll it out, it's all right there. I know what I have every time. Also, one thing that I like to do is I will take a sheet of paper and I'll put it in a plastic cover and I will have an inventory sheet of what tools I have. The reason for some of the Torx bolts is the drain plugs on the bottom of you know, your oil drain plug and your transmission drain plug, just in case one of those vibrates loose or you have a problem. I like to have an actual wrench. I have seen guys drive a screwdriver into something and twist it, break a screwdriver, damage a drain plug. I've seen people do things, you do what you have to do when you get on the road. Sometimes you have to tear something up knowing you're gonna have to replace that small piece when you get home. That's just the very nature of it. So remember when you go out on these trips, be careful, think about what you're doing, look at where you're going. Another thing that I didn't really talk about, but we'll talk about it right now, is personal security. 
Um, this right here is good for personal security. There are other things that you can carry for personal security, but make sure if you do carry those things, you check the laws and the states that you're going into. Uh, for example, when we travel, California laws dramatically are dramatically different than the laws here in Florida. So although I may be able to carry my personal protection device here and in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Texas, Arizona, New Mexico, if you get into and you are carrying that personal protection device and you get caught, you're going to jail. It's different. The laws are different. You need to know where you're going. And if you're traveling up that eastern seaboard, when you get into a lot of these northeastern states, you need to know the laws of reciprocity, what you are capable of doing, what you're not capable of doing, and what you feel comfortable doing. Your personal security for you is absolutely paramount. So I'm going to do another video on that where you talk where we'll talk about awareness levels, parking and those sorts of things and some of the things that we've had happen to us on the road because we have had some mild security breaches as I'll call them. And I take those things very very seriously. I really do. With coach Vic being in a wheelchair, it's really important. Also, this is a valuable tool in your toolbox. These cell phones are very, very important. Keep it charged. Make sure you have that USB device and your phone is charged up at all times. Don't let that thing get weak when you get out somewhere. It's important. It can be a matter of you know, someone surviving or not surviving. They also make personal ELT devices and different things of that nature. If, if you feel you're gonna be in very, very desolate areas and people that I know that have traveled internationally, they carry those kinds of things that, that they utilize satellites and things like that. I don't feel the necessity of carrying those things in the areas that I travel. Hasn't been a need so far. And we've pretty much done well with our cell phone coverage everywhere we've been. But there again, it's something you need to look into and think about. If you do me a favor before we go, please like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. Turn your notification bells on. All that stuff really does help. We are going to be doing a 3,000 subscriber giveaway soon. Um, I ordered some glasses, uh, some Shady Rays glasses that look really, really cool. Uh, I will unveil them when we get ready to do the giveaway. Uh, I ordered two pair of them, in fact, one for me and one for you. So we'll be getting those hopefully soon. As soon as the Postal Service gets them here, we'll advertise the giveaway and we'll get it done. So there you have it. Take care of all that. And again, I appreciate you. So until next time, do me a favor. Go out, buy the motorcycle of your dreams, eat right, take care of yourself, and remember, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Now you go seize the day. We'll talk to you real soon.